Hello students, have a nice day to all. Today I am here to teach you a poem from your English textbook, First Flight. The name of the poem is A Tiger in the Zoo, written by George Leslie Norris. George Leslie Norris was a Welsh poet and short story writer. He taught at academic institutions in Britain and the United States. He is considered as the most important Welsh writers of the post-war period and his literary works have won many prizes. A Tiger in the Zoo is a poem which explains the agony and helplessness of a caged tiger that lives in a zoo. The poem contrasts a tiger in the zoo with the tiger in its natural habitat. There is a contrast in the mood and environment of a tiger when he is in the zoo and a tiger when he is in the forest. Now let's see the stanza wise explanation. Let me read the first stanza. He stalks in his vivid stripes, the few steps of his cage, on pads of velvet quiet, in his quiet rage. Here the poem begins with the description of a tiger that is confined in the zoo and it is walking around in the cage under his bright colored skin. The poet further says that the tiger can take only a few steps because the cage is very small and it's not easy to move in it. When it is moving in the cage, its footsteps cannot be heard because the tiger has very soft feet like velvet. Due to this softness, you know, there is no sound of tiger's footsteps. But the tiger is not happy and it is quite angry about being confined in the cage. The tiger tries to control his anger by quietly walking in the limited space of that cage. He is angry because, you know, he is not free, he is kept under captivity. Now, let's see the rhyme scheme of this stanza. You know, this whole poem is written in the rhyme scheme A, B, C, B. You see the last words of each line, stripes, cage, quiet, rage. Okay, so stripes you have to mark as A, cage, B. Quiet is not rhyming with these two, so it will be C. And then again, rage. Rage is rhyming with cage. So there we have to mark B. So the rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B. So all these stanzas are written in the same pattern. The word meanings of this stanza. Stalks means walks with pride. Vivid means bright color. Pad, fleshy pose of tiger. And rage means anger. Now let's look into the second stanza. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass, near the water hole where plum deer pass. In this stanza, the poet is taking us into an atmosphere of a forest where the tiger was free. The poet imagines here that if the tiger was not confined to the cage, then he would have been hiding himself behind long grass near some water body. So that... He could easily catch a deer in order to have it as its food. Basically, the poet wants to say that the tiger is supposed to live in a jungle where he could catch its prey and eat. He has freedom in the forest, whereas he cannot do so in a cage. Here, indirectly, the poet is also saying that we have no right to snatch away the freedom of these wild animals. Okay? So, as I told you, the rhyme scheme of this stanza is also the same as A, B, C, B. Word meanings, lurking means wait in hiding to attack. Plump means fat. Let me read the third stanza. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fangs, his clothes, terrorizing the village. Now, you can see here in the second and third stanza, the poet is describing the life of a tiger in its natural habitat. So in this stanza also, the poet is saying that if the tiger would have been free, he would have been growling around the houses and he would have terrorized the people in the villages around the forest area. You know, this would create fear among the people living in the villages by showing his sharp teeth and claws. Thus, the tiger would become a cause of terror for the villagers. Here also the poet is indirectly telling us that if we destroy the natural habitat of wild animals, they will be forced to enter into our residential areas in order to find their food. Word meanings used in this stanza, snarling means growling, bearing uncovered, fangs, teeth of tiger, claws, nails, 
terrorizing means frightening the people now fourth stanza but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors in this stanza the poet takes us back to the reality of tiger's life in a cage in the zoo the poet sees the tiger caged in a small concrete cell which is made of strong building materials tiger is a very strong animal but you know now in this cage the tiger's strength is also kept behind the bars he just walks in the cage and he also does not terrorize the people who comes to the zoo because you know why his power is restricted by the cage he is powerful no doubt but you know he cannot attack the people as he is locked in the cage so he is quietly walking in the cage without paying any attention on the visitors word meanings concrete concrete means building made of bricks cement sand and water ignore means avoid now the concluding stanza he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars in this concluding stanza the poet says that the tiger hears the sound of the patrolling cars in the night patrolling cars are the vehicles of guards ya vehicles of police who are used to keep a vigil at night so even at night also the tiger is disturbed in the zoo by the sound of patrolling cars therefore he stares at the shining stars with his shining eyes the poet wants to say that the tiger is sad as he is confined in the cage so he cannot do anything therefore he stares at the stars in the sky at night and tries to divert his thoughts towards the stars in the sky by looking at the stars the tiger hope to be with nature some day word meanings of this stanza patrolling means to guard ya yeah, to vigil stares means looks now what is the moral of this poem the moral of this poem is that just like human beings animals also long for freedom and do not like being caged so we should allow this wildlife to live in their natural habitat now let's see some of the important poetic devices used in this poem stanza wise first stanza personification alliteration metaphor transferred epithet and oxymoron these devices are used in the first stanza here first line he stalks in his vivid stripes here the tiger is personified as a human that's why the poet has used the word he so there is personification then stalks and stripes in these two words the consonant sound the first letter you see consonant sound is repeated okay so that is alliteration then metaphor metaphor means indirect comparison okay when indirect comparison is made between two different objects that is called metaphor here the tiger's paw is compared to soft velvet cloth point of comparison is that both are soft transferred epithet so transferred epithet means when an adjective is transferred from one noun to other noun when both are closely related okay here the tiger is quiet but that quiet adjective is transferred from the tiger to another word that is rage so we can say here transferred epithet is one device used by the poet then last line itself oxymoron quiet and rage are two opposite words when two opposite words are used together that is called oxymoron so oxymoron is a special type of antithesis where two opposite words are used together then stanza 2 you can see alliteration and internal rhyme are used in this stanza first line and the last line examples of alliteration should and shadow sure sound is repeated plum and pass okay per sound is consonant sound per is repeated so that is alliteration then first line he be he and be are rhyming to each other so there is internal rhyme now stanza 3 onomatopoeia alliteration internal rhyme and repetition so these four devices you can see in this stanza so onomatopoeia means what when a word itself is suggesting sound here snarling snarling is the sound growling sound of the tiger okay so that is onomatopoeia then alliteration you can see the first line first line he and houses 
her her sound is repeated there okay then internal rhyme again you can see he be internal rhyme two words are rhyming so internal rhyme now what is the repetition bearing his white fangs his claws his repeated there okay twice it is used so there is repetition stanza number 4 metonymy and irony are used in this stanza so you can see here he is locked in a concrete cell here actually what is the meaning of concrete cell that is cage so here cage is represented by these words concrete cell when one word is representing another that is called metonymy then irony irony the example to irony is his strength behind bars poet says that he is very strong behind the bars but the reality the meaning is just the opposite behind the bars the tiger is helpless and without any strength okay so that is irony now let's come to the last stanza you can see here alliteration again alliteration in which first line he hears her sound is repeated there okay there is alliteration then metaphor metaphor means already i have told you that is indirect comparison is made between two different objects here the eyes of tiger are compared to the stars in the sky okay so point of comparison is that both are very brilliant then you can see brilliant word is repeated okay that is repetition so all these are the poetic devices used by the poet in this stanza hope that this poem is clear so until we meet again take care all of you bye bye